Hey guys, Sean Lentz here from Appalachian DIY and today I'm going to show you guys how to plumb up for underneath a concrete slab and everything you guys need to know to get it inspected. Okay guys, I'm going to show you real quick how we are going to glue all this up. The first thing is on your cut ends. Um, just go ahead and um, give it a little bit of a chamfer. That way you have no um, little ridges on here that are sticking up. Like that. Brush all the dust off. Also, if you guys are using a handsaw, make sure that you're chamfering this inside. Just take a knife um, around there and just uh, clean that up. But that's good like this. Um, we brushed all of our dirt. Um, any crud that's on our um, pipe itself. We also made sure that our connection here, that it's all clean in here as well. So we're going to take our purple primer, going to apply it to the outside. You want to make sure that you're getting an even coat over the entire thing. We're going to do the exact same thing to the inside of our larger fitting here. There we go. Making sure that we're getting the entire inside. Now while this is still wet, we want to apply our cement. That is kind of hard when it's um, really warm out because this stuff will dry up. So we're going to take our cement. We're going to coat our inside like so. Make sure it's all the way throughout the whole thing. And then we're going to do the exact same thing on our pipe. You want to make sure that you're getting a nice generous coat over the whole thing. And then what we're going to do is we have lines on here. So we're going to push this in as far as it goes and then give it a quarter turn as it seats in. So that is going to make sure that everything is down in tight like so. Dry fit guys is really important. I will uh, put a T on here to know where my pipe will bottom out. It also lines up with my other connections so when I go to put this on um, we know that we need to turn it a quarter turn so we'll put it on here turn it to where our lines uh, match up um, and I'll know also where I'm going to bottom my pipe out at so um, rough in is really important and also marking this stuff because getting it back into the exact same position is pretty difficult if you don't have uh, marker lines for you guys to line up because we're going off of 45s, going up to a long section, and then we have another 45 up to our vent. So uh, here, again, you guys can see that uh, we have our lines to mark up here, and then our lines here. I also have arrows showing what uh, the flow is for all of this stuff too, so we keep it in order. So what we're going to do is we are going to work from uh, the back out um, so we just did that connection that I showed you. We're going to put that down and then we have our, so we have our vent right here. So what we'll do is we will work from our main trunk up. So for these connections, um, sometimes they have a little bit of a taper to them. So we're going to want to hold these in place until they set for a little bit. Otherwise, they're going to push back out a little bit. So hold them for about 30 seconds and then you can go ahead and let them go and move on to the next section.
Now that everything is set up and glued in place, I'm gonna run you guys through what I have here. Um, and we have an inspection today, so I'm gonna show you what you guys need to do to prep for that also. All right guys, so I'm gonna run you through here real quick what you guys need for your inspection and what you can and can't do in your uh, plumbing. So right here, I made up this valve. This is to test. And right now we are sitting at five pounds on a 15 pound um, gauge. Uh, so this is what your inspector is going to want to see to have the whole system pressurized. And all we have are these um, black rubber caps on everything to get our pressure up and keep it. Um, this valve you can get at Home Depot for, um, I believe it was $10 for this one. It has a Schrader valve on top. So you can just air this system up with a normal um, air thing um, that you have for your bicycles or whatever uh, and your car tires. So that's really nice and handy. It's easy to do. You just need to make this thing on a cap, um, and I'll show you guys how to do that in another video. Uh, coming down, this is our clean out right here. So coming down, we have a long sweep 90. You guys can't be using um, the short 90s. I'll throw a picture up to show you what that looks like. It has to be a long sweep like this one if you want it under slab. And here is our vent. Uh, we're coming down 45 down to a Y, so we have a 90 right here. We're going to a Y. We have my toilet right here. This is three inch, um, down to a 45 and a Y also. And then we're coming down here, the main trunk. We have our shower right here. So you guys are going to need a P-trap for this. Um, for all your showers, it must have a P-trap. And then we come over here. This is my sink. This will have a, an S trap in it when we go ahead and actually put the sink in, so that doesn't need it right now. That comes down to 45 to a Y, and then it goes out. Um, so we'll switch to 4 inch when we get to my main trunk. Um, as soon as we get out of here, though, the city is going to require me to have a special trap and stuff out from the building out. Um, and into their main trunk for the city. So, um, let's see, all of these lines here, the vent, the shower, the sink, all must be two inch because it is under slab. They, that is the smallest they will allow um, for sizing. And we just have three inch for our toilet and our main trunk, um, but like I said, from here out uh, we can still do three inch um, we have our main trunk line running from our house and we're going to probably catch it somewhere down in there and then we'll switch into our four inch line down there but three inch is good for under here um yeah guys so the y's that we're using uh we have our 45s uh right here so we're going to 45 into a 45 on our Y. So you're going to be using a lot of Ys on your system like this and 45s. You want to try and stay away from your 90s, 90s unless you're using the long sweep like you have here. Uh, one critical thing, guys, is making sure that you are lining up when you do your dry fit. Make sure you guys are making your lines like this so you can line up your pipe with your fitting. I also have arrows to show me the uh, direction of flow. That way you're just making sure that your uh, everything is lining up because I did mess up right here. See, we're only off probably about a quarter of an inch and boy, did that really screw up my toilet. Um, it was canted off probably um, just about an inch, uh, maybe inch and a half doing that little bit of cant on that. Um, we didn't cant up our Y like I needed to, and it threw it off. So what we had to do is we had to cut our section here and get this um, toilet back up plumb because it was tilted out. So make sure you guys are following your dry fit lines uh, perfectly. Um, I just have everything down here. I also labeled everything. 
um, because when you rip everything apart, you just need to know where it was. So I have two 45s here for the toilet. So this was our toilet top. And then there's our toilet bottom for our 45. And everything, guys, has these lines on it to line stuff up. Um, I can't stress enough how important that is to get your dry fit in and get all your lines marked up. So um, I think the only other thing I can advise you guys with is when you are putting these together, the cement lubricates the pipe so it goes in a little bit further. So when you are doing your dry fit, make sure that instead of just slipping the pipe into your Ys, that you're actually holding the pipe on the outside and marking how far it actually bottoms out into your Ys and your fittings. Um, because I was a little short on how far my toilet needed to be, so we measured everything off of our forms and we wrote everything on here, on my forms itself. So my toilet needed to be 61 inches from that form up front and 21 and a half in. And when we fit everything together, I was more around 60 inches, which I did give myself some buffer space, so we were okay with that. Um, but slipping those pipes together, everything fit a little bit more snug and everything kind of shifted down towards this way. Um, so make sure, and because I only dry fit them um, and then mark the line. So when you actually take your pipe, lay it on top and mark right here, like see how this is this wide, how it's this wide. Make sure that you're marking your pipe and mark a line here to where this pipe will bottom out and make lines on all of your fittings where it should actually be bottoming out. That way you know you have a full fit and that it will all line up and your measurements will stay the same. So yeah guys, this is what we did. We just kind of put measurements on our forms to make sure that everything was exactly where it needed to be. Um, it made it super simple for getting everything lined up and exactly where it needed to be because when we go ahead and build up this thing needs to be exact we also have our electric coming in here um, we have inch and a half because we're going to be pulling in probably a hundred amp service to this so we didn't want anything too tight we also have our water here um, anything any water that comes in underneath slab needs to have insulation so we have this insulation right here. It is the rubber stuff, not that foam stuff that's made more for indoors. So the rubber is a indoor outdoor stuff. It uh, doesn't soak up the water as quickly. And we also need to be sleeved um, for any water that is under slab or under your footer. So that is the water, the sewage and the electrical coming in underneath the garage. Another thing guys that you must have with your pipe is you must have a quarter inch of fall or slope per foot. So what we have here is we have this Milwaukee plumbing vial. So we have uh, three lines in here. The first one, um, that is if you have the level right in the middle, that's level. The first line right there that is eighth inch, and the second line like that is quarter inch of fall per foot. So we can just go ahead and stick that on there. And you can see here that I have over um, a quarter inch of fall, so we're good there. The only thing that you don't want um, sloped too hard is your P-trap. Um, if you have this sloped too hard, what they do is they'll call that an S-trap, I believe it is. And what it is, is it will not um, hold your gases in here properly because it's tilted too hard and gases could come out of your um, P-trap. So this is the only one that you guys kind of want to have like right on um, with your quarter inch of fall per foot. So um, just make sure that your P-trap is good 
um, and that you have the proper slope on everything. Um, with these Ys, um, it's nice to come in down at an angle. That way you know you have um, as much flow as you can. Uh, this one back here, this Y, this still needs to have off of the Y, needs to have slope. And you can see here that we have plenty of that. Even though it looks almost like it's level with the ground, it's not. So when you bring your Ys in, guys, make sure that they are sloped up and not like pitched down towards the ground. Uh, make sure that your, your Ys um, are pitched up. That way it can collect from whatever it's um, getting, in this case the toilet, and still has a proper, proper slope on this side of the Y, not only your main trunk. Um, so make sure that you guys have your quarter inch of fall per foot. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and head over to Appalachian DIY for more videos. Thanks again, guys, and I hope to see you next time.